Hello there, how are you? Welcome back to How I Did It. Today's episode, we are going to bring the main power wire, main power service wire, into our power pedestal. <laughs> How's that for a tongue twister? Alrighty then, y'all remember when I dug this three foot hole, technically it was 40 inches. Well, it started filling up with water because our water table here in Florida is uh, pretty high. So here I'm just getting myself into the box after closing it up once I got it set on the power pedestal itself. Get everything cleared out of the way and try to keep from having anything fall into this hole. Now, right now it's approximately 7 o'clock in the morning. The sun's just starting to peek up over the trees there as you noticed. It is already hot, hot, hot. Heat index today is supposed to get up to 107. Yeah, I'm not much looking forward to it at all. So I'm going to try to get this thing knocked out before the true heat of the day sets in. Step number two, setting up my OSHA approved work platform. <laughs> Just kidding. But this tractor, oh my goodness, it has been a godsend having it. Especially trying to work over this hole, doing the splits, doing different tasks that the tractor was not in its place. Whoops, good thing I don't need that part. I really don't want to put a bunch of stuff down in the hole. Sure, there's probably an easier way to do this nonsense. Finally. like this. I'm just temporarily putting this on to show you. I'm going to pre-assemble everything and then just glue it and stick it in there. Especially with all that water being down in the hole. And then they require this. It's called a uh, insulating bushing. Here it's rounded over. Keeps the wire from possibly getting chafed by the rough edges. And that goes on top. So the power is going to come in down there through 2 inch PVC. It'll run up. I'll glue it into the bottom. It's going to come in right here and go up through this chafe or channel, chase, whatever. 120, 120, that'll give you your 240 service. The neutral will come down over here and tie in, and then the ground will go there.
Now I'm showing where I just keep cutting things and, and here I'm just scraping the rough edges off. There's actually a tool for that and you want to make sure that you do this on your pipes. Make sure that you have a nice smooth surface. Again, it goes back to that chafing. That will work great. Pre-assembling this. Now there was a little bit of a learning curve figuring out how to get this 90 degree elbow to slide down. And it wasn't the usual real long wide sweeping elbow. So it took a little bit of finesse, but it worked. And Getting the sheathing off of this wire was pretty cool. All I had to do was hold the blade on the edge of the, the outside of it and then pull up on the insulation and it cut it right off. It was fantastic. Now I kind of made a pretty big mistake here. It created a, quite a bit more work for me in the long run. I ended up moving that elbow too far down on the wire. but. I did finally learn how to get that elbow to move, like easily get it to move. And so you'll be able to see that technique coming up. So should you get yourself kind of into the same pickle that I've gotten myself into with this, um, it'll make it a little bit easier for you. All right, now I brought this too far, but the way to get it to go back is just keep everything rounded and it will just slide right down on it. Pretty cool, huh? And then obviously once you get here, you'll have to somewhat straighten it out. telling you what, by the time the end of the day rolled around working with this wire, okay. my hands were so tired from trying to grip onto it and squeeze things and move it. I'm still doing the physical therapy for my broken right hand. <laughs> this was definite therapy, but at least I got it together and it worked out pretty good overall. Now make sure you get it seated all the way down in there. There we go. Oh, you got me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, thank goodness that yeah, hole was about half full of water, so it, the oh, yeah. safety oh, ring was floating on the top. <laughs> Yeah, this was one of those times when I wished I could have had the OSHA approved safety platform to stand on, but in order to get that all to fit down into that trench that I had dug, it had to be moved out of the way. Now here I cut my wire to length and then this um, grease that I put on here is required by code 
in some states, not others. I'm not sure if it's required in Florida, so I just opted to go ahead and get it. It's like an oxidation type grease. It just helps with aluminum wires. Now you have to remember also, your main wires that service your neighborhood overhead, those are all aluminum wires. Now the sheathing makes it a little bit stiffer. Granted, you have copper all through your house, it's a better conductor and all that, but for this wi larger wire gauge, for the expense that it would cost to go purchase copper, I went ahead and just, kicked my butt. again, opted for the aluminum. And it does meet code. Now something that an old electrician taught me several years ago, actually many, many years ago, <laughs> save as much wire in that box as you can without it being a jumbled up mess. Just in case for some reason you need to extend it out, it just gives you wiggle room. The ground wire is connected by the screwdriver but the neutral is this Allen, and I'm gonna have to go get the Allen key. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead, set my two 110s on this, and then go get my Allen um, wrench, and we'll get this tightened down in, and then go on. So here, I'm just coming back, I'm finishing up. The red and the black are your 110, your positives, and they just hook in. That's where your meter's gonna go. Now, this is where I opted to stop for the day. At this point, believe it or not, it's like 12.30 in the afternoon. The thermometer was saying that it was 100 degrees. I was hot. I was tired. My hands were super fatigued. So I went ahead and decided to just close everything up. Alrighty then, that's it for this week. I'll see you all next week with the installation of the RV box and a 110 GFCI outlet. Thanks for stopping by. Y'all have a blessed day.